Members, the Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor. <laughs> City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, the 13th of August, 2019. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pay respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with land and acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and First Nations who may be present with us today. The Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Thank you, members. We'll be seated. Uh, members, we have one uh, leave of absence, which is Councillor Kouros. Um, I will look to item four, the confirmation of the minutes. I'll ask for someone to move the minutes, be accepted. Thank you, DLM. Um, and a second to thank you, Councillor Hyde. Are there any amendments or comments on the minutes? If not, I'll call for the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, there are no deputations tonight, nor are there any petitions. Um, I will just make note that today is the birthday of Queen Adelaide, and we celebrated with a reception today with 30 Adelaides in the room, including um, Ms Adelaide Norman, who turned 101 today, which was a fairly significant birthday to be had at our celebration. Um, that takes us to item number seven. Um, 7.1, which is the recommendation of decluttered streets, naked streets review. I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Martin, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to the matter? Uh, no, 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 no. Thank you, Councillor Sims. No members? No, if not, I'll go back to the mover, Councillor Martin. Sometimes. Thank you, uh, members. Those in favour? Those against, that is carried. The second recommendation is the 2018-2019 uh, quarter four finance report. Look for a mover, thank you, Councillor Martin. And a seconder, uh, Councillor Knoll. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak? Uh, just briefly, Lord Mayor. A uh, question first though, um, in the papers that were presented to us, R745, Victoria Square Access and Inclusion notes that we lost half a million dollars or at least budgeted a half a million dollars for the project and then the contractor went into administration with no money refunded. How much did council lose? Three Lord Mayor Clinton, thanks. Uh, three Lord Mayor. Um, Council lost nothing in that transaction. Um, at the point in time of the contract, um, the contractor that went into um, administration uh, had only purchased materials at that time, so we've taken possession of those materials and no consequence to Council. So the no money refunded line means that there was no transaction, so that's great, that's good. Okay, uh, look, Lord Mayor, if I can uh, just um, note that um, we are uh, performing 
quite well compared to what was the anticipated uh, deficit uh, and borrowings at the end of the financial year. And our borrowings have come down to about $64 million um, in terms of the, uh, uh, the budget. Um, but we are uh, still in a difficult position in as much as we have um, uh, about $30 million in this current financial year, which is due to council as a means of avoiding our coming close to or exceeding our, um, our uh, uh, prudential limit. However, um, I, I wanted to ask the question uh, for the sake of clarity of the, the administration that uh, as at uh, the 30th of June, uh, the interest on our debt appears to have been $1.75 million or $34,000 a week. Is that correct? Through Lord Mayor, I might ask Tracy or Alex to come forward to answer that for us, please. Through Lord Mayor, Councillor Martin, which slide are you referring to in the pack? Um, it is the overall budget position slide. Can you give me the page number? Uh, through the chair. Um, yes, uh, the interest that we incurred was nine hundred. $11,000 uh, against a budget of uh, $1.7 million. So the budget amount was $1.7, the actual amount was $900,000, therefore the debt repayments were of the order of $20,000 a week, not $34,000 or $5,000. Uh, there are a couple of factors that come into play there, but effectively uh, the debt the interest that incurred was significantly less than forecast uh, due to the timing of capital works. Part of that is in relation to the timing of works actually during the financial year. So that's not to say that money wasn't incurred during the financial year, but it's the timing of the works during the financial year. Uh, that, that is the, uh, we, have, we, have I read it correctly? We've only completed 40% of our capital works programs. Therefore, that impacts on the borrowing. That's, that's correct. Uh, through the chair, we've certainly completed more than uh, 40%. Sorry, 40% outstanding, 60% no. So, uh, if you refer to the capital program slides. It's just before schedule eight, I think. So, if you refer to uh, uh, schedule 13, uh, that indicates we've spent approximately six or achieved 60% of the spend uh, throughout the financial year in relation to the capital program. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Knoll, did you wish to speak? Uh, members, would anybody else like to speak to the recommendation? If not, I'll go to Councillor Martin to sum up. Summed up. Members, those in favour, those against, that's carried. Thank you. Um, recommendation three uh, is the order making policy. I'll look to the floor for a mover. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder, Councillor Abraham Zedo. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Councillor Abraham Zedo. Members? If not, I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, that leaves us with recommendation number four, which is the public notification of Category 2 development applications. I'll look for a mover. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Moran, second Councillor Knoll. Councillor Moran, did you just speak to the motion? No, I don't, Lord Thank you, Councillor Knoll. No, members? No, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Thank you. Um, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. That takes us to item 8.1, which is the council assessment panel. 
Oh, so sorry, I looked, I've got two hands up. Did you see which one? Oh, so Councillor Abraham today. Um, Lord Mayor, can I move an alternate motion? You may. Well, everything remains the same except for uh, for a period of uh, six months. I'll look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Kathleen, uh, Councillor Abraham today, did you wish to speak to that? I uh, reserve my right, Lord Mayor, thank you. Sorry, Councillor Moran. Uh, I just take your advice as I uh, um, intend to um, put my hand up. Have I got a conflict at this stage? No, you don't. No. So, uh, Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak to them, the amendment? Uh, no, thank you, Lord Mayor. Okay, members? Councillor Martin? Yeah, look, I do, Lord Mayor. Um, the motion that was proposed is the motion that you would expect at the end of the term of a CAP member. That is that it is renewed for the standard period, which is two years, which is consistent with the election of the members of the, uh, the external representative members. Now, in this instance, I am aware that Councillor Moran is keen to nominate for this. Uh, I am aware, and I've been lobbied by Councillor Abrahimzada uh, for him to have Councillor Moran's position. And he has proposed that this term be shortened so that Councillor Moran's term is just six months and he may then contest it. That is a clear conflict of interest, but quite separately to that, uh, I do object to the way in which this process has been conducted. Um, we have had furious behind the scenes negotiations going on, which I'm sure the Deputy Lord Mayor would, cons would confirm, to ensure that Councillor Moran is prevented from doing the job for two years, the job which she loves and which she does well. She has served this council enormously over the last, how long is it, uh, Councillor Moran, 10 years? Uh, 23 years. 23 years in total. So um, I, I can't understand why this council is in the process of horse trading with terms of six months to allow a clear run for another candidate when we have an excellent candidate here. Now, I am going to propose to members that they ignore this, ignore this amendment and do the right thing and appoint Councillor Moran. This is a really bad outcome. This is, this is actually the outcome of factional politics. It is about the winner takes all approach of the Team Adelaide. Uh, I don't understand how council is served by that. I honestly don't understand, both reputationally and for the team spirit of the place. And moreover, um, it is so incompetent in that it, it means that the subject comes back to us in six months. So there are more meetings, more internal rows. Now, I suggest that everyone in this room considers this carefully and rejects this motion to reinstate the two-year term and allow the person who is best qualified to nominate and hopefully that will be put to the vote and she'll succeed. Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd just like to highlight, um, of course, I've seconded this motion. I think it's uh, uh, I think it's a good idea put forward by Councillor Abraham today. And I would say this isn't a shortening of the two-year term, rather this is an extension of the current two-year term. And that's the view um, and that's the perspective uh, upon which we should be viewing it. Um, uh, of course, I'm sure many in this chamber can, can stand up and sing Councillor Moran's accolades. She's been on there for 23 years um, uh, and certainly she is a <coughs> Uh, she is a competent administrator when it comes to the what was previously the DAP and is currently the CAP. Um, uh, and I think uh, at, at a time like this, when we have such an influx of, of new councillors um, into the chamber, um, as well, of course, there's experience in the chamber as well when dealing with uh, uh, property and architectural matters and also public policy matters and, and the like, um, I, I think it would be a good, a good move for us to extend Councillor Moran's term. Um, uh, uh, so that we can uh, better come to a landing where the rest of the chamber sits with regards to this position, um, as it is such a, a highly regarded position um, as far as committees of the City of Adelaide um, administers. So upon that basis, I would, I would commend the motion and I would gladly support this 
extension of the term as opposed to a, a shortening of the next term. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, I also uh, support Councillor Moran um, remaining uh, in the role. Um, I think uh, Councillor Moran has been an um, effective advocate. But I know that we're talking about. Sorry, we are actually term. talking about um, the amendment. I, I wonder whether, as a compromise, maybe 12 months uh, rather than six months uh, could be um, well considered. In terms of split, that way it's split in two. I just want to put that out there. Thank you. And any other speakers? Councillor Kerr. Uh, <laughs> sorry, about to lose my voice. Um, thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, um, I just think it's germane at this juncture to point out that uh, there is nothing in this motion, uh, there is nothing in the, in the amendment put forward by Councillor Abraham today uh, that dictates what uh, that dictates the length of the next term should be. Uh, so, on that basis, I'm not sure that we ought to be uh, assuming that there is uh, a handover or something which seems to seems to inform the argument so far. Um, that is my observation uh, at, at the moment of, of what's going on. We, we, it seems to be an extension. Uh, I can understand the extension, but there's nothing actually. There's nothing actually saying that uh, we are going at the end of six months to shift to someone else. It's open to the chamber to decide. Uh, at that point, and uh, that that uh, uh, renewal will be two years. So I simply offer that uh, observation to uh, the rest of the uh, members. Thank you, members. Councillor Abraham, to sum up. Uh, just just quickly, Lord Mayor, I'm not here to entertain conspiracy theories, so uh, I will cut it short. Uh, I, I actually would like to uh, uh, thank Councillor Moran for uh, for her time on the, uh, on CAP, uh, and I look forward to nominating her once we get the procedurals out of the way. Thank you. So I am actually going to uh, ask for a vote on this amendment. So we'll just, we'll take it in part. So uh, number, so um, the first part, uh, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, I will also ask for a procedural on number two and number three, if I can have some, uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Abraham today, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Connold. Councillor Abrams, did you want to speak to two and three? Councillor Connold? No, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Councillor Moran, I'll tell you in a minute. So, if I could just actually have, uh, did anyone else wish to speak to items number two and three within the recommendation? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Abraham, did to sum up? Those in favour? Those against? That's carried. So, I will now go to the nomination. I'll come back to part four. Um, I'll go to the nomination. So, if, thank you, Councillor Abraham, today. Uh, I'd like to nominate Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran, do you accept the nomination? Okay. Are there any further nominations? If not, I will ask Councillor Moran to leave the room. <laughs> Uh, members, I'm going to ask you to vote on Councillor Moran uh, being the member on CAP, but I'll also ask you to vote on part four, which is the re remuneration at the same time, if members are happy with that. So I need a mover. Thank you, Councillor Martin, and a seconder. Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak? Yes, I need to say, Lord Mayor, I'm bitterly disappointed by this. I think this is a really bad outcome for Council. It sends all of the wrong messages to the community. Um, I, uh, I have no dispute with the amount of money required. Um, it is a large sum of money that um, uh, is requisite with the skills that are required. And the skills, by the way, that Councillor Moran has displayed uh, for decades. It's uh, just curious to me that we would not want to appoint someone so experienced in favour of anyone else. Councillor Abraham today. Uh, Members, if not, I'll go to the move to sum up. Councillor Martin. Summed up. Members, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Would you be able to ask Councillor Moran to come back in? Members, I'll keep going. Um, Councillor Moran uh, comes back. There she is. 
Congratulations, Councillor Moran. Um, that we go to uh, item number nine on the agenda, 9.1 .1, questions on notice. Uh, Councillor Hyde. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I take my question as uh, read and I'm satisfied with the answer. Thank you. Would you like me to read the reply or? I'm not going to put everyone through that. Thank you. Thank you, members. That takes us to 9.2. Councillor Martin. Do you want me to read the question, Lord Mayor? If you wish, Councillor Martin. Sure. Um, section 82.2 of the Standing Orders provides the Lord Mayor shall be provided with all other assistance which is reasonable, necessary to enable the Lord Mayor to carry out the role of Lord Mayor, including a council vehicle and driver for local and interstate journeys associated with the official business of council. This vehicle must be available for other duties when not utilised by the Lord Mayor. Could the administration advise the number of occasions and the total hours the Lord Mayor vehicle and or driver has been used by the Lord Mayor since November 2018 and the number of occasions and the total hours it has been used for other duties in the same period? Thank you, Councillor Martin. And the replies between November 2018 and the 31st of July 2019, a period of nine months, a council vehicle and driver have been used by the Lord Mayor on 44 individual occasions for a total of 243 hours. The vehicle has not been used for other duties during this period, uh, though I will comment that it is available for any other duties, it just hasn't been used. Thank you. Uh, that takes us members to uh, item number 10, which is questions without notice. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today, and then Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, my question, um, could the administration please provide clarity around the decision of 16.9 million investment in Gawler Place upgrade, in particular, the options that were debated and the advice uh, that was given around each option. CEO. Three, Lord Mayor. Um, up until now, the commercial information relating to Gawler Place has been subject to a confidentiality order. Um, I've since exercised my, um, my delegation to partially revoke uh, the order, as it has no real current relevance to, the, to this stage of the project. So I can talk about that freely tonight. Um, what I can advise is that um, the Gawler Place upgrade project is a key part of the 2011 Rundle Mall Master Plan and the, uh, the project scope and the estimated cost um, in excess of the original $7.85 million budget allocation uh, was considered at a special meeting in July 2018. At the meeting, Council requested that the administration present alternate proposals, and um, including a proposal that did not exceed that original budgeted amount of $7.85 million. Following that, um, a feasibility process was undertaken by the administration over several months, and uh, this resulted in the development of cost of designs for for two options, option one and option two, with an additional option that we now call the July option, um, which was included as a reference point for further consideration. So that was the, the three options that were worked up. Just for clarity, and just for the, particularly for the council members that weren't part of those negotiations or, or report processes. Option one um, had an estimated cost of the 7.85 million, and it consisted of an asphalt reseal, um, concrete and asphalt footpaths in their current location, uh, retaining curb and gutter replacement and trees that were to be in planter boxes. Uh, there was no arbour, uh, there was no public art or shared zone or protection for the future, provisions for the future. So that was option one. Option two had an estimated cost of $10.92 million and um, that consisted of, again, asphalt reseal uh, with concrete banding on the road for beautification purposes, paved footpaths, rollover curbs, trees again in planter boxes, uh, a jacaranda tree in the ground, and no public art, no future proofing or shared zone. So that was the second option at 10.92 million. The July option, which has been referred to, had the estimated cost of 16.96 million. 
um, and the full scope included the the full shared zone. It included trees in the ground, an arbour, public yard, paving finishes to match Rundle Mall's finishes, and importantly, future proofing. So at Council's meeting on the 11th of September 2018, options one, two, and the July options were presented for consideration. Um, at a special meeting held on the 15th of September, Council approved the commencement of the work on the project based on the July option, uh, which was a budget at a cost of 16.96 million. So that was the process that we went through. Now the budget reconsideration we've recently been through with QF4 is reflective of underground risks that occur in civil construction and is within normal contingency allowances. Although we didn't have a contingency within this project for the reasons discussed last week. Having said all that, the project is on track. Um, the project has great support from traders and will be complete before the Christmas trading period this year. So I'm quite optimistic about that. Thank you. Councillor Martin. Yes, um, a question, two questions without notice. The first is, given that the third option was approved at a special or extraordinary meeting of council at 9.30, Saturday the 15th of September, shortly before, hours before, the caretaker period provisions of the Local Government Act were uh, in force. Did the administration ever consider that this matter might have been in breach of the caretaker provisions of the Local Government Act uh, and or might attract the attention of the Ombudsman? CEO? Yeah, three Lord Mayor. Um, the administration handled this project carefully, given the sensitive circumstances surrounding it and the timeframes of the election. Uh, we took governance advice, clear governance advice, and that was provided to council at the time, confirming that it was appropriate to continue with consideration. Uh, had it not been, we would have advised council. You had a second question? Yeah, Councillor second question, Martin. Lord Mayor. Um, look, given that uh, the, uh, the vehicle and driver provided for the office of Lord Mayor was used between the period of November and July um, for what appears to be on average once every five days. Has the Lord Mayor or the administration ever considered whether or not we should dispose of the vehicle and find some alternative means of transport? Uh, we've had several discussions, Councillor Martin, as to the use of the vehicle, um, uh, alternate uses of the vehicle, and also the uh, it is coming to the end of its lease life and whether that should be replaced with an electric vehicle so that we are actually also looking at how we are using things. Um, and that's an ongoing discussion between the CEO and I as to best use of that vehicle. A supplementary question, may I ask when the lease of that vehicle expires? Uh, I believe it's on a five year, which is this year. Thank you. Um, we will keep going. Members, that takes us to item number 11. And uh, Councillor Sims, 11.1. .1, the policy investigation gaming machines. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move the motion as printed. Oh, sorry, turn my mic off. Councillor Moran. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, uh, members will be uh, familiar with um, this motion. Um, it's designed to investigate ways to reduce the influence of pokey machines in the CBD and to do so by investigating uh, advertising and promotion on public space, our activities and events policies and also Council's future lease agreements. And I do want to draw attention to future occupancy uh, and lease agreements. Um, we do uh, currently um, lease to one licensed premises, Golden Waddle on Perry Street, that has pokey machines, but I'm not proposing that we um, impact on their lease agreements. What I am proposing we do is that we look at um, arrangements we might enter into in the future. We've had um, pokies for 25 years in South Australia, Lord Mayor. Indeed, um, that anniversary uh, was achieved last month. And there can be no doubt, uh, certainly in my mind, that these machines, which are designed to exploit uh, members of our community, have caused enormous social harm. According to Relationships Australia, and they've released a report looking at 
um, the implications of poking machines in South Australia. They say that you're more likely to get struck by lightning than to win a major prize on a poking machine. That's statistically a fact. Since pokies are introduced into South Australian pubs and clubs, South Australians have lost more than $15 billion on them. And in 2016, pokies in Adelaide alone earned nearly $200 million in bets. And it's estimated that around 40% of that revenue came from people who are experiencing gambling harm. And by gambling harm, Lord Mayor, they mean people who are experiencing gambling addiction and the issues that are associated with that. In fact, all forms of gambling, they say, pokies have the highest level of gambling harm associated with them, with 85% of people experiencing gambling harm playing pokies. The advertiser also uh, has reported on this uh, last month, and they reported on figures from the Attorney General's Department, which revealed that about $11,000 more was lost for each poker machine in the year 2018 to 19 compared to when the machines were first uh, ballooned, which was 17 years ago. And just under 20% of South Australians play pokies once in 12 months. That's according to the latest prevalence in SA um, gambling report. There's also been um, reports done that have found a correlation between uh, crime data and um, the uh, University of uh, well, Monash University has found a correlation between poking machines and family violence. Um, there's also been a link established with a relationship breakdown, suicide, and um, a range of other measures. Now, Lord Mayor, I think it is time for this council to consider whether or not we want to be associated with um, <coughs> and whether we can play a role in reducing their influence in our state. And I had a look online and saw our 2016-2020 strategic plan and um, City of Adelaide, the focus on being a livable city. And um, it includes in there um, the very laudable goal, which obviously I support, making City of Adelaide, or ensuring the City of Adelaide residents uh, will have well-being. Let's have a minute. Uh, more. Thank you. Ensuring that City of Adelaide residents have well-being that is above the global average. Uh, it also says in this plan that we will support vulnerable members of our community. We will enable people to use the city safely and seek to reduce crime and that we will support social entrepreneurs to develop business models that have a positive impact on our city's well-being and resilience. Well, I would suggest, Lord Mayor, that pokies are not in keeping with um, the City of Adelaide's roadmap, which I would encourage all members to have a look at. And they're not in keeping with our council's focus on building happy and healthy communities. I think it's time we took action to reduce their influence in our city. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Moran. Members? Councillor Hunt. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I just have a couple of questions um, uh, to clarify my statements before I weigh in on this. So looking at the administration comment, um, I, I just was wondering how many uh, uh, poking machines does the Golden Bottle um, actually operate? CEO? Pretty well, Mayor. Tom, could I ask you to provide an accurate answer, thanks? Through you, Lord Mayor, the, the property uh, that you're talking about has a license for 20, but actually operates 16 machines. Uh, thank you. So they actually operate less than what they're entitled to operate. Through you, Lord Mayor, that's correct. Right. Okay. Um, and just reading the administration comment as well, I understand um, there was somewhat of a transition from the current tenant from the previous tenant. Um, for what period of time was that property left vacant? Through you, Lord Mayor, uh, councillors would remember uh, that we actually, the previous owner went into financial difficulty and so we called in the administrator. So the property was about uh, two to three months uh, vacant and the administrator worked to bring a tenant to council. And this is as a result the tenant who's actually in uh, the facility at present. And did the previous tenant operate these machines as well? There's been a condition in regards to the license over the property for 20 odd years in regards to this so that they could operate these machines, that's correct. And that license isn't administered by council, is it? 
That license is actually operated under the Gaming Machines Act and they have to fully comply in regards to that act in regards to both presentation, advertising and operations of gaming machines. Right, and that's not an act that Council has any feed in or influence on? Uh, that's indeed correct. Right, okay. And um, uh, also reading the report, um, there was mention of uh, movement of the gaming facilities from a more prominent part of the property to a less prominent part of the property. Um, uh, assuming that took place during the lease negotiations and, and what have you, um, uh, who who funded that that refit? Who funded moving that to the to the less prominent part of the property? Through you, Lord Mayor, it, that was a condition that council stipulated in regards to the new tenant. So the tenant themselves actually funded the relocation to move from the corner of the facility right into the, the rear of the facility. Okay, so so they took it upon themselves to move the move the tokens to back. Um, and is, is, is council aware how many how many poker machines are operated in the city that we don't actually have any tenancies over? I understand this is a question outside of our, our purview, but uh, it's just out of my curiosity. Three, Lord Mayor, if you take liberty and let me read this out, uh, I actually took liberty to get the advice. So Adelaide City, we're talking about the CBD, have 50 premises with approved licenses, including the casino, eight premises with machines on premises but not operating, 10 with licenses but no machines on premises, and seven out of the 50 license holder, holders have suspended licenses. Um, in North Adelaide, there's 10 premises uh, with approved licenses, one premises with machines on uh, premises but not operating, three out of the 10 license holders have suspended licenses and six premises out of 10 are operating. So in short, there's a total premises within the City of Adelaide Council area with licenses to operate of 60. 60. However, Does there's only 31 that is active. Okay, so we're, we're, there's basically 50% of what they could have operating in the city, more or less. Yeah. Does that include the Adelaide Casino? That does indeed. That does. Okay, um, uh, thank you for that and, and please governance start the clock. Um, uh, with that clarity on those oh, questions okay. there, um, I'm, afraid, I'm afraid I can't uh, support this motion. Um, ultimately, ultimately, because I think it is well outside of our purview um, uh, to, be, to be weighing in on this. Notwithstanding the fact that when we're talking about the current lease that has, and there's only one property here that we're talking about, and that property has actually already done their due diligence in relocating their pokey machines away from prominent view, um, and they already uh, operate less than what they're entitled to operate. Um, notwithstanding that, reading the administration report, it looks like it looks like their lease commenced on the 1st of October 2018, and there are three terms of five years of rights of renewal. Now, I must confess, I sort of flunked property law, but reading that in plain English, I would say um, that that means after this current lease, they've got five years, five years, and five years. So um, if we're talking about future opportunities for council to reduce poker machines that we operate, of course, of which there are only 14 out of many, many other gaming machines in the city, we're not just talking about this council a couple of years down the track, we're actually talking about, what would it be? I, I suppose five council times, five council terms. So it's not this council, it's the council after us and the council after them and the council after them, and the council after them, and then the council after them. Um, and I, I must confess, I must confess, colleagues, I think that is actually patently absurd. Um, and so when we're looking at this motion, when we're looking at this motion, I would say um, uh, that we can't support this because it actually achieves very, very little. Um, of course, all of us, all of us are concerned about the scourge of gambling and addiction, um, not just of pokies, but of many, many other things. Um, uh, uh, that beset our society. Of course, we're a city designed for life. We're looking to be a city um, uh, of well-being. But this is a motion that I think addresses none of those things. Um, uh, this is a motion um, that, uh, to be honest, I would say has been generated to capitalise on on something that is popular within the court of public opinion. Um, uh, but really, at the end of the day, it's going to achieve very, very little. Um, and so, councillors, I would I would implore upon you 
um, uh, to refuse this incursion into an area of policy that is outside of our purview. I would say uh, this is really akin um, uh, to us council being like Captain Feathersword going and tickling um, uh, the casino barons and asking them um, to do something that uh, that they will ignore us for asking them to do and, and something that we cannot direct them to do. So, councillors, I would um, I would say this motion is not something that this chamber should entertain. Uh, uh, and on that basis, I implore you to vote against it. I didn't think I'd... <laughs> anyway, I didn't think I was going to hear something that talks about the wiggles in chambers, but um, Councillor Donovan, if I, if you're next, and then Councillor Moran. Thank you, Lord Mayor. This is a very straightforward motion. It's a public health issue, and we can influence this public health issue through this very simple structural change. So I absolutely commend Councillor Sims' motion. And I would note that, in fact, a question of administration. Um, if we think about other public health campaigns that are of a similar ilk and of a similar scale, i.e. smoking, do we have any influence over, for example, our choice to promote smoke-free zones within Rundlemore or any other areas of the City of Adelaide? Is that something that's state regulated or is that particular area something that is regulated by a decision of council? See Through Lord Mayor, we do comply with current legislation without doubt. We do have the ability to impose bylaws that do restrict smoking, there is no doubt. So the, the outdoor um, restriction of smoking that does not pertain specifically to dining areas, which is regulated by the state, is that something that we have requested and imposed or is that something that's a state regulation? See you. Through you, Lord Mayor, we do have designated no smoking areas, such as Rundle Mall. So that we that, have created and we have chosen to impose as the City of Adelaide. That would be, that would be so, correct through the bylaws. So in the same way, we have this opportunity here to impact on a public health issue that is compared at the same scale to something like smoking. We know when you look at public health promotion around problem gambling, it impacts on individuals, it impacts on families, it impacts on communities. And this is a very straightforward motion that allows us to have some structural impact on this significant issue. So for that reason, I would absolutely commend Councillor Sims' motion. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Councillor Moran. Yes, um, I'm probably the only person that remembers when we set that lease up for that uh, building, it was during um, Lord Mayor Harbison's time. And we were upset as landlords of, have it, of having, it had a lot more poker machines then. And we put strict conditions on the previous owner for the poker machines, but we meant to phase them out. Pokies are bad. It's a simple black and white question. I can see the team shaping up tonight that this isn't going to get up, but it's a shame. Even if it does a little bit of good, our councillor Hyde was saying, oh, it doesn't do much good, it only does a little bit of good. If it, if it does a little bit of good, wouldn't you vote for it? Why would you go to all the effort of voting against something? Because it's, like, it's not quite enough good, it's only a tiny bit of good. Um, if it's good, it's good. Pokies are bad. Good is good. They create poverty, they cre create violence, they create neglect of children. Uh, there's nothing good about them. Um, just one question halfway through. Doesn't the bowling club, Adelaide Bowling Club, have them as well? Through you, Lord Mayor, no, they don't. Okay, well, I think you might be incorrect. I think they do have some. Um, but uh, I'll bow to your wisdom. Um, and that, because I remember ages ago they wanted more, but we stopped that. But anyway. Um, I think this is a good motion. It um, it clearly states what what council's always stated. It's been a, a, a clear thing that we don't like poker machines in our in our events. It's not um, telling the casino what to do. It's not telling anybody what to do. It is completely within our purview. It's talking about our events, our premises, our le leases. It is completely with that, and I'm sick and tired of hearing that as an excuse. It's outside our purview. No, it's not. We lease buildings out and we lease events. These, this is our job. We don't like poker machines. If I, if I polled everybody here, you'd all say you hated poker machines. So even if it does a minuscule amount of good, why would you put your great giant brains into gear to vote against it? Thank you, Councillor Moran. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, I don't potentially have a, an issue with this. I just don't find um, there's a couple of there's a couple of points on here that I don't know if we can even sort of enforce. 
So I have a suggestion, which I think will solve everyone's problems. Uh, I'm not going to suggest an amendment yet, but I'm going to talk to why and how we could potentially move forward with this. I think the intent of Councillor Sims is that no future lease that this council issues to a future business, we will consider having pokies in it. And I agree 100%. I don't think if we buy a new property, if we have an existing property in which we want to give someone a lease, we're not interested in a pokey style operation or a gambling style operation of any type whatsoever. And I think if that's the intent, then why don't we, instead of investigating, we move that council sets a policy position to not allow any pokies machines in any of its new leases. I mean, that's a very direct, um, uh, a direct, um, I guess, order to the administration to says, if we were considering any new leases on any of our new premises, we will not consider pokies. And I think that is actually a very clear message to the community versus investigating and working out what we can and can't do. The clear message is on any property we own, we're not interested in having um, in having any pokey machines. So I think I'm happy to move that as an amendment to that motion. So I'm happy for you to consider that. So instead of moving the four points, it would be a very simple, set the policy right now. With the other points. No, I don't see the point. It overrides it. It overrides it for me. So I'm gonna move that as an amendment, um, councillor, because I'll, I'll find that, it, look, I'll move it as an amendment. I'll talk to it, if it fails, it fails. I'm still happy to support um, the original motion. Um, I don't I don't support item one in that motion, to be honest, because if there are pubs in the city uh, that are currently operating Pokies Machine because they've historically done that, we shouldn't penalise them by not going there and having a meal. I mean, I'll tell you now, there are people in the city coffee shops, they're using gambling apps on their phone right now as we speak, and we're not penalising those coffee shops. So look, in all honesty, uh, the pubs that are in the city that are outside our remit, I don't agree with item one. I think it's unfair to be able to penalise the, these pubs and not support their good product, their good South Australian product, because they have pokies in there. But I do believe that for every lease we have in the city as a council... Okay. Um, I'll just actually ask for a seconder for that amendment before you speak to it. So, okay. Councillor Kerr. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I do believe that this is a very strong message to our administration, to the community, that any council-owned asset on any new lease, we will not consider any type of pokies machine. Uh, I would even go as far as saying gambling uh, type style business. So even if we could sort of put slash uh, pokey slash gambling style business under any of our new leases, lease agreements for the city of Adelaide. Um, that's a very clear message. That also deals in a future policy position if the if this golden model was to come up in two decades to council, then the policy position would be, look, we're gonna be giving a new lease to this premise. We will not give you new, a new lease. So this even deals with the existing legacy issue of having uh, pokies uh, in, such, uh, in such council premises. Um, Look, I, I'd ask council members to support this. I think it's a sensible approach, but I think at the same time, it, it really it deals with the heart of the issue of what councillor was saying to us before councillor Sims, which we have a very clear directive. I agree with councillor Moran. It is our position to be able to advocate for this, um, especially on our council owned properties. Um, and look, I'd sort of leave it, I'd leave it at that and I'd, um, I'd, I'd look for some debate. I could just check that they, we've captured the amendment. Yeah, but gaming style is not, like like PC games, right? That says pokies. As pokies that slash gaming style. Like I'm just worried that people that are playing um, games on no, computer yeah, screen. No, no, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So gambling style. Okay. Yeah. Or, or gaming machines. Just wipe out gaming completely. <laughs> just gonna throw them off the same PlayStation out. Yeah. Um, and I'll ask members yeah. to support this. Look, I, I don't think this is a, um, a deviation from what Councillor Sims is saying. It still talks about reviewing the opportunities to phase out gaming machines from council-owned premises and consider any future occupancy and lease agreements. It actually says, instead of investigate, it says do it. And but you're taking out one, two, and... Well, because I don't... Uh, so it's, I, it's replacing... In, the, in my the debate, form. I'm replacing before because I don't support us not supporting businesses that have it. It's their prerogative. They're going to have it. If I'm going to have a meal there, if staff have meals there, it is what it is. Um, and investigate changes to council policies to restrict or prevent modify street advertising. We've heard before we don't have control over that. It's a separate process. Um, so look, and on point three, I agree with you 100%. And instead of a review, let's strengthen it. Let's lock it in. That is our policy position. We will not allow it. And that's a very clear message. Okay. 
Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, Councillor Kerr, and then I'll go to Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, uh, look, just sitting back and, and, and watching this debate, um, uh, it's, it's to be, look, to be completely honest, I think that this amendment obviates uh, some problems inherent to the existing uh, motion. Um, two, two problems strike me. One is that the investigating potential changes policies, uh, et cetera, you know, uh, Councillor Kerrer, so to, we're actually talking to the amendment now. Yes, so. and I'm speaking in favour of the amendment. So, so if, if, I, if I may clarify, Lord Mayor, I think that the amendment uh, obviates uh, some, uh, removes some problems uh, that we have with the previous uh, motion, and which is why I'm supporting the amendment. Uh, and the reason for that, Lord Mayor, is that number one, uh, we, we have a venue. Uh, let's not forget. Uh, we have a venue in a troubled street. Uh, Piri Street uh, is plagued with vacancies, probably the poster boy of vacancies for this city. Uh, the Golden Wattle have taken a great deal of risk uh, to bring business into that street. Uh, and I think anything we, we, we must balance, anything we do, because we are talking about one, one premises. So we must balance uh, the broad, uh, we, we ought to balance, and I, and I put to Councillor Sims, that he ought to consider that we, we must be mindful of balancing the, the fact that we have a very big risk-taking uh, venture, uh, well, a small but a, but a big risk-taking venture in the Golden Wattle in Peary Street that is full of vacancies. And I, and I would submit that Councillor Sims take, uh, take heed of that. We must, we, we, we must balance this. So I think the amendment put forward balances uh, recognising that we, we ought not to be activists against against the Golden Wattle and prejudice their investment in that building. But at the same time, the other problem that's that's uh, prevented here uh, is that is the one that Councillor Hyde uh, raised, a very good point, that we are seeking to bind a council 15 years down the track with the final, uh, with, with number three, reviews the opportunity to phase out gaming machines, considering future occupancy, or considering future occupancy or lease uh, agreements. So, in my humble view, this is a much simpler, a clearer uh, way to achieve the outcomes without prejudicing any existing businesses and without uh, a kind of a strange uh, binding of council 15, 20 years into the future. And that's why I'm supporting the amendment. Thank you. Councillor Sims, I actually had Councillor Abraham Zedo's um, hand up first and then I'll go to you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll, I'll make it quick. Um, uh, the I, I, I can see Councillor uh, Sims' intention, and um, uh, I just don't think that original motion that was put up uh, quite passes the pub test. And I'll uh, and I'll use a, uh, a prime example. DLM previously uh, touched on this. This here, our phones are uh, walking uh, poker machines. Uh, we can gamble on these things all day and all night, all we want. So, uh, you know, if you want to block uh, uh, pokers out. You might want to do something about this. You might want to do something about your iPad, your laptop, and the list goes on and on. Uh, I'm not 100% uh, set on the um, on the amendments either, but uh, I'll see how the uh, uh, how the debate goes. Uh, now, Councillor Sims, did Councillor Ho, did I miss your hand before? Yes, that's enough, or I can see after. Uh, well, I'll go to Councillor Sims first, and then I'll come to you, Councillor Ho. My apologies. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I don't um, support uh, this amendment. Um, obviously, I support the policy position of not allowing um, pokies under any new lease agreements, and I'm happy to incorporate that as a variation to point three, should this amendment um, fail. In developing this, I uh, consulted with administration, and um, I was attempting to put forward something that uh, would give them clarity in terms of being able to work through the issues and also uh, maximise the, the prospects of success in the chamber. Um, but it looks like I may be about to get lucky uh, tonight in terms of um, getting a good outcome, so we will see. Um, but I do uh, encourage members to vote against this amendment and to um, support um, the full suite of, um, of measures. Um, and the reason being that uh, this looks not only at um, council-owned premises, but it looks more broadly than that. It looks at advertising that happens on our city streets, which is within our purview. It's the public domain and we control it. It also looks at where we have our activities and events. 
and I ask members to consider if we're going to be hosting public forums, public activities and events, is it appropriate that we have those in uh, licensed venues that have poking machines? This is asking us to uh, develop a policy position or consider developing a policy position. It's not binding council to anything. Um, consider developing a policy position that looks at those, um, looks at uh, those elements. Um, Councillor Kira has uh, been fixated on the golden bottle and, and mentioned that this is binding a council to um, decisions down the track. This was never um, intended to uh, address the golden bottle's current lease. Um, I've made that very clear when I outlined the motion originally, and I've made that clear in uh, media commentary in relation to this. But it would um, be intended to target uh, future lease agreements. And of course, it's appropriate for this council to develop long-term policy positions. We do so in relation to a range of different matters. Um, so look, this is a situation where councillors, you can have your cake and eat it too. Um, I'm happy to accept a variation to point three should this amendment um, fail, and then everybody can get what they want and we can get the three measures through. Thanks a little bit. Councillor Hyde. Um, look, I do have a question um, of the CEO. What is our ability to restrict, prevent or modify street advertising of gaming machines? Could we have some an answer on that one? Yep. Through you, Lord Mayor, um, it is limited. Um, we have two sorts of signs, signs that are attached to a building, and those signs would need to go through a normal development application process. We also have movable signs, A-frames, um, and they are governed by our movable signs bylaw. Both of those provisions deal with size, signage and placement, but don't really deal with content. Content is managed or, or controlled by the Australian Association of National Advertisers Code. So we, we have the ability to control the actual signs themselves, but not the content. Okay. Councillor. Councillor Hyde speaking to the amendment. I just have a question. That code to which you referred, um, uh, sorry, through the Lord Mayor, that code to which the CEO referred to, um, uh, who, who administers that code? Yeah, yeah. It's really the, best, the advertising standards agency, as far as I'm, I'm aware. And who has bearing on the advertising standards agency? We understand it's a federal entity. Federal entity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do they do they regularly take submissions from local government? <laughs> Yeah, there have been a number of occasions where council has been concerned with content that we have approached them to to provide a response. Um, so we've done that in the past. How receptive have they been to those approaches? They have responded, as far as I understand. Have they changed the code? Um, I need to take that on notice. I'm not really sure. Okay. Interesting. Thanks. I will go. If there's no other comments, I'll go back to the deputy lord mayor to some. Oh, sorry, councillor Martin. Councillor Martin. Uh, yeah, look, um, Lord Mayor, I, I, I don't know whether people understand, but um, you're providing endless hours of entertainment here. Councillor Sims has proposed a reasonable measure. It was for an investigation. And it, it's kind of like chain rattling. He does this sort of thing, and then the members of the team say, gambling! And then suddenly we have this long debate and we move to a position that's far removed from the one that was proposed. And I could tell it was being taken seriously, by the way, because Councillor Abbey was typing his newsletter furiously and that bit's very the long. Deputy Lord Mayor, thank oh, you, Councillor Sorry, Martin. the Deputy Lord Mayor was typing his newsletter uh, and that bit's quite long, so I could see he was taking it seriously. But uh, the proposed amendment just muddies the waters. I mean, sure, we have control over our own properties and what, what's being uh, proposed originally was a reasonable thing, but now we've taken it further. We're, we're moving those things that the big end of town wouldn't like, m moving the signs and things out of there. And we do have control over it. I mean, I can't tell you how many A-frames I see down the street saying, pokies now. You know, if we have absolute control over signage in the city in certain instances, and that's all that Councillor Sims has been moving. But what we've got here is a dog's breakfast because the policy position becomes one that pits us against all gambling, as opposed to the moderate suggestion of an investigation. We now have a position where 
I dare say the, uh, the bingo in the community centres, which you may or may not know does occur, the raffles which do occur, the North Adelaide Society raffles for beauty. Every Christmas you go along, you buy $10 worth of tickets and just about everybody wins a prize. Um, some don't, but most do. Now, this is just the sort of thing that I would have expected to happen. It is ill-considered and we have moved completely away from what was a sensible notion on the basis that chains have been rattled. Just stop and think, don't support this, go back to the original, all that's going to come back to you is a report and if the report says something you don't like, then you can vote against it. Members, if not, I'll go back to Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. I don't really think we need a report on this, Lord Mayor. I think it's another report, another cost. Let's drag it back in. I don't think this is different at all. A matter of fact, if you look at point three of Councillor Sims' motion, review the opportunity to phase out gaming machines from council owned premises. This is saying, do it. This is saying, any new lease we provide, do it. Don't do a report, don't waste your time. We're not interested. It's a very strong message to say to anyone that's interested in leasing a property from council that we will not be in the business of pokies and gambling in any of the premises that we own. We've also heard from our administration today that we don't have any powers currently uh, under the investigate potential changes to council policy to restrict or prevent or modify on-street sign. If we do, Councillor Sims, I'm happy to have that included and we can move a motion without notice later to do that. I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. On item one, I think it's very unfair because there are businesses out there that are leveraged to the hill, uh, that have borrowed money, that have set up pubs on what they think is a legal operation. Look, this is a legacy issue. This is a generational thing. It's got to phase out. I mean, surely it's a terrible idea, but I don't think we should be penalising their restaurants and those businesses because simply they've got poker machines at the back. Um, again, I see the principle behind it uh, of what Councillor uh, Sims is trying to achieve. But we can all walk out of here today if we all vote for this, knowing very clearly if we engage anyone in the community that they can be very, very clear that this council, and they don't need to put a bet on that, it'll be very clear that this council does not support any pokies or gambling operation in any of its premises in the city of Adelaide. And I think that's a very clear message to the community. I'd ask members to support it. Members, we're voting on the amendment. Those in favour? Those against? Councillor Moran, did you vote? Also against. So, so members, if I could ask that again. Those in favour? Uh, <laughs> those in favour? Fine. Those against? Uh -huh. So, as a casting vote, I actually um, support uh, not having pokies in our premises. I do support that. Um, given that we're not able to restrict um, the advertising content, I think that makes number two uh, void. Um, and I do actually think that this will go some way, a long way actually, to achieve exactly what you're trying to do with your um, with your motion on notice, Council Sims. And I've seen furious nodding in agreement that actually what we really do, and I think I've heard from pretty much everyone in the chamber, is to not allow pokies into our premises that we lease. Um, so in this instance, I will vote for the amendment. So that will be carried. Councillors, a division has been called on the amendment. Those in favour of the amendment, please rise and remain standing till all names have been called. <laughs> Lord Mayor. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kira, Councillor Hyde, and Councillor Connell. Uh, that now becomes a substantive. I go back to Councillor Sims to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, obviously, I am um, disappointed uh, to not see um, points one and, um, and two looked at. However, um, I do want to uh, thank the Deputy Lord Mayor um, because I think um, the outcome that we've achieved tonight, whilst not um, my uh, optimum position in terms of working um, to look at those other issues as well, does send a very, very clear message um, about the future direction of the City of Adelaide. Um, and it is, I think, um, a great step for us to say that we're not going to be involved with the, the pokies game and to say that it won't be part of um, our future lease agreements. 
And that means, of course, that if we are in a situation where we um, acquire uh, licensed venues or we're turning um, our uh, premises into licensed venues, the pokies won't be part of the picture. And um, I think that's a really, really good, um, a good outcome for um, our residents and ratepayers because we know um, the harm that pokies do to our community. So um, whilst I didn't get everything I wanted tonight, Lord Mayor, um, I think this is a good win. Um, and uh, I encourage um, council members to vote for this so that we can send a very, very clear message to uh, our community that, um, you know, pokies are no longer um, a good bet for Adelaide. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Uh, members, to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Members, that takes us to uh, 11.2. Councillor Martin. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I do I have a seconder? Second, sorry, our members look for a seconder. Yep. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, um, look, there's been a bit of media uh, commentary today suggesting that uh, by raising this, I'm claiming kudos. Um, but look, in all seriousness, I'd like to thank the Deputy Lord Mayor for raising the issue of catering. Um, Lord Mayor, you have a deputy who's right onto it. Um, I wasn't aware until he mentioned it that the dinners that are provided for staff and council members are anything like $750. Um, uh, all that the cost over 12 months was $30,000. And uh, nor was I aware until I did some digging that civic receptions cost anywhere between eight and ten thousand dollars, depending on the scale of the reception. And uh, I am aware that we hold dozens of these events. Um, uh, last week, I, I received uh, another uh, for one on the 29th, um, at which our catering contractor, and, and this is no criticism of our catering contractor, I think they do a wonderful job. Um, but with their six or eight staff, they walk around the Queen Adelaide room serving uh, nice wines, um, a, a really nice Fizz and Sav Blanc, uh, and a Pente one, which I love, and the Tempranillo that we've been drinking recently, I really enjoy. Uh, they are great. Uh, they hand around spoons, little porcelain spoons with pork belly and skewers of prawns and all of that sort of stuff. Um, I'm getting hungry thinking about it. And then there are the really big occasions, like the Christmas party uh, here at Town Hall, the Lord Mayor's Christmas party, which I understand costs tens of thousands of dollars. Now, I have to say that I, I do support uh, uh, civic receptions. I think they, they're an important way of celebrating the success of the city and, uh, and our people. Um, and I do support providing food for staff and elected members after meetings when we adjourn, sometimes late at night. I think that's a reasonable thing to do. But my motive in uh, putting this on the radar was um, before the Deputy Lord Mayor says, let's cancel this occasion or that or this meal or whatever, um, let's have a look at what the real cost is, um, in, including the staff hours. Uh, I know that the Lord Mayor's staff are involved in these things. Let's have a look. And let's also ask ourselves, um, these are six-star receptions, Lord Mayor. They are a credit to the city, but um, would it be okay to do a four-star reception? I mean, does does it really matter? It's the act of celebrating uh, an individual or, or something in the city. And frankly, I've said before, what is wrong with a, a, a cup of coffee or a tea, as we did this morning, with a, a, a nice cream biscuit, and then a presentation? A presentation to the guest. We could give them a book or something. Um, Lord Mayor, you could inscribe it. I mean, what's what's wrong with that at ten o'clock in the morning instead of filling people with champagne and canapes at six? Um, I think we need to get the facts, and I do believe that this uh, this motion will achieve that. And I do ask members to support it because having the facts is the foundation of good decision making. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Members. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Can I, sorry, can I please suggest, uh, can I move an amendment, please? I did circulate that earlier to um, to our secretary, but we displayed on the screen. I'm happy to go through it. 
I will ask for a seconder. Councillor Knoll. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Um, would you like me to give members a minute to read it, or should I read it? I haven't seen it. Could you read it? Yep, I'll read it. Um, the amendment reads as follows, that Council 1 notes the current efficiencies to be delivered by the administration as reflected in the current budget. 2 notes that a service review is currently being conducted to maximise efficiencies. 3 requests that the service reviews be expanded to include ways that elected members can work more efficiently to save ratepayers money. For those reviews to include and not be limited to the separate and total cost under the terms of the contract between the City of Adelaide and Epicure for catering of all council related activities, including council committee, council assessment panel, staff dinners, and other refreshments. Two, revisit the current council and committee structures and look at ways to be effective and efficient. Sorry, look at more effective and efficient ways to meet that take into account the occupational health and safety of council members and staff that may include meeting times and breaks, dinner times, remote meeting provisions, etc. And last, request that that report or the administration present such report back to council by October 2019. And I believe I have a second order, Lord Mayor and Councillor Kanal. A point of order, Lord Mayor. Um, this is a fresh motion. It involves a cost measure, which is a restructuring of the council and committee structures which would fail your test of motions without notice because it includes cost implications. I have no objection to the first parts of it, but the committee schedule is a matter that the CEO has promised to bring back to committee before it comes into uh, council. The, the Deputy Lord Mayor is seeking to circumvent that whole process and breach your rules related to motions without notice. Well, Through Lord Mayor, the judgment call it needs to be made as to whether this is in, in direct opposition to the motion. And to me, uh, sitting here, it, it appears to be in line with the motion, um, the original motion. It's just seeking more information. So, um, Lord Mayor, I don't think it's in, in contravention of our standing orders to deal with it. Sure. Point of order, sorry. Would it be possible just to pause the meeting for a moment to give us an opportunity to read it? This is new to me, I haven't got my glasses. Um, Absolutely, you yeah, can have a moment to read it. Wouldn't mind. Yeah, thank you. Sure. I'll read it again. So, item one notes the current efficiencies to be delivered by the administration as reflected in the current budget, so that's noting. Uh, item two uh, notes that the service review is currently being conducted to maximise efficiencies, so that's noting, that's already underway. Three, request the service reviews to be expanded to include ways that elected members can work more efficiently to save ratepayers money. For those reviews to include and not be limited to, that was a part of Councillor Martin's motion, the separate and total cost under the terms of the contract between the City of Adelaide and Epicure for catering of all council related activities, including council committee, council assessment panels, staff dinners and other refreshments. And item two, revisit the current council and committee structures and look at more effective and efficient ways to meet that take into account the occupational health and safety of council members and staff that may include meeting times, breaks, dinner times, remote meeting provisions, etc. And item four, request that the administration present such a report by October 2019. And I've got a seconder. So I'm you do, to... Councillor Cannell. Thank yep. you. Thank you, Councillor Cannell. Um, Lord Mayor, we keep asking things of our administration. Um, the administration was able to reflect some serious efficiencies in the current 2019-2020 budget. We have requested a service review, a service review that looks at the whole administration and looks at how the administration can better run and better be more effective and more efficient so we can save ratepayers' money and look at that dividend that we can bring back to the community. 
Um, and that's the noting of the two specific items. What I'm asking to do is using the same model of that service review is for us, the elected members, to lead by example and ask for that service review to also be casted amongst our operation as elected members and look at ways that we can better improve efficiencies and find savings within all areas that sit within our control and power be it dinners, be it committee meetings, be it all the things we can do. I'm asking for this in the form of a report. This is not a decision of council. Uh, this is work that the administration can do uh, within, uh, within their capability and capacity. And that will come back to council in October for us to look at what the potential efficiencies could look like, what savings we can find, and some of the things that we can achieve. Uh, that's- uh, Councillor Moran and Councillor Hyde. I just don't think Councillor Martin's approach goes as far as looking at what other things we can do to achieve that. Um, I also want to note that the current expenses around the dinners and everything else we're talking about isn't listed in an item in the budget, but the civic stuff is. Uh, it's very clear that goes out to public consultation. We know what the cost of running the Lord Mayor's office is. This is very clear and in no way, shape or form, we should change or less extend the hospitality arm of the city of Adelaide to our ratepayers and to our visitors. This is taking a measure of looking at what we can do. This is not talking about what we can do in the civic receptions. We've already, we're talking about a 20 minute window of catering in a civic reception to be able to honor people, to be able to leverage the city's position. Surely there'll be ways to do that better. Maybe, maybe not, but let's look at our own house first. Let's bring our house in order. Let's work out how we can better be effective, lead by example, find some savings, and then we can spread that across other aspects of the organisation, other aspects of our operation as well. So I'd ask members to support this. This is merely a report. Um, it's not binding council into any decision. It will give us all the information by October, then we'll make the call. I have uh, Councillor Connolt as a seconder. Reserved, then I had Councillor Abraham today. I have your hand, um, Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I've got one question. Um, <coughs> so here we mentioned... Uh, 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 councillors, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to actually ask for a just a, uh, a one or two minute uh, a, a adjournment. I will explain to you if you'd like to just step out of the chamber for a moment.
My apologies, Councillor Abrahams, though, for interrupting. Um, the floor is no yours. No at all. Thank you. Um, so my question was, I just wanted some clarification. Um, if, uh, if, uh, there's a mention of uh, uh, council meetings, there's a mention of committee meetings, there's also a mention of council assessment panel. I just wanted to check, um, does the Parklands Authority get the same sort of treatment? Uh, the Parklands Authority doesn't actually have catering. Okay, um, and what about the Audit Committee or any other uh, committee of council? Uh, only other than tea and coffee, no. no. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I have Councillor Sims, then Councillor Moran, Councillor Martin, then Councillor Hyde. Thanks, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, I just wanted to float the idea of the variation before I um, comment on the, the motion. I just note uh, point three dot point two. Revisit the current council and committee structures. Um, I wonder if I could put in insert in brackets while retaining the current frequency of meetings. And the rationale um, is, Lord Mayor, that this is, um, I know there's been some discussion informally uh, Around the, around the place, around the idea of um, reducing the number of um, meetings. And I am concerned that um, revisiting the current council and committee structures could be a, a prerequisite for that process. So I think I'd be very happy with the uh, amendment if it made it clear that we weren't going to be um, having less uh, meetings. Okay. But of that, course we can talk about as a, that. That has to be a variation accepted by the Deputy Lord Mayor and the seconder. It's a, it's a revisit, but I don't care at this stage. So we're going to be looking at it anyway, so that's fine. So if I could capture those words, Councillor Sims. Whilst retaining the current frequency of meetings. So in other words, we're looking at the uh, current council and committee structures, but we won't be looking at the frequency of meetings. We're retaining the, the uh, meeting schedule as is. Is that, so is that acceptable to well, you, a, a, oh, De Deputy Lord Mayor? Yeah. Yes, and to the seconder? Okay, Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and thank you, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, on that basis, I'm uh, happy to um, support um, this amendment. Um, I think it does make sense to look at um, the issues that both Councillor Martin and um, the Deputy Lord Mayor um, has raised. Um, I, I want to make the point, though, of course, when we're looking at civic receptions, I think there's a, an element of celebration and recognition of the good work that people do in our community. And whilst we should always look at um, making savings where we can, um, I also want to make sure that you know we, we're still celebrating their work um, and providing them with a, a memorable um, occasion. I think that's important as part of, um, of any review that's undertaken. And um, of course, with respect to council zone and uh, dining, um, you know there is some fat on the thighs in terms of that budget, I'm sure. Um, and uh, I welcome the opportunity to have a bit of a look at that and look at the savings that could be made. Um, I do also want to uh, make the point, Lord Mayor, that I think we should always try to encourage local businesses um, as well um, when it comes to these kind of um, catering. And there are lots of South Australian businesses that provide great um, food um, and uh, maybe that's something we could explore as part of uh, this exercise too. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sims. I have Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, I do thank the Deputy Lord Mayor for including that because there has been a rumour whizzing around this um, house um, that there is a move to uh, reduce the number of council meetings to 10 a year. Um, some other councils do that, but in looking into that, they actually meet once a week. It's just the council meeting, the legislative um, arm. Uh, I think that's a mistake. Basically, the council is not nimble enough and not swift enough in, um, in making uh, decisions. It's often uncomfortable for some sections of um, councils to have so many meetings because it does give the minor voices an equal footing on the floor. Um, I'm surprised that this was added because it really is quite different. But um, I wondered, I, I was not sure actually about uh, Councillor Martins either. Um, the councillors that walk these chambers are the cheapest thing of all the council. We are paid very little. Um, we have one secretary between us. We have a reasonably frugal dinner afterwards, but I, I wouldn't, um, for the Court of Public Opinion, as we mentioned tonight, one can always be more frugal. 
um, and I'm happy with that. But I would hate um, the general public to think that we're sitting there quaffing champagne, eating oysters and uh, so forth in the dinners afterwards. It is it serves a purpose, the after dinner. Some count, new council suggested we could break in the middle or eat at the beginning. We tried that and as I suspected, no, but all the working people stayed at work. They're not gonna rush in to have, to have sandwiches at five o'clock. So that was uneaten. Um, the purpose of the after council <laughs> dinner um, serves a very, very strong psychological purpose. It means you can sit down, break bread with your colleagues, depressurize, and also discuss things with, the, with the, the administration. You have no other venue to do. I know the CEO agrees with me, and um, it's it, not a matter of stuffing your face with food. It's, it's not uh, many a time that the CEO and I are very cross with each other, but over a glass of wine and a frugal stew, um, we, can, uh, we can see eye to eye. But uh, that aside, um, it, is, it does perform an important. I, on my 24 years, I've seen it before, during, and after. And this is definitely. Um, the best way to do it psychologically. Uh, people say I don't want to eat at eight or nine o'clock. It really isn't about eating. But also one has to remember, and I see that Sam's put in his motion, um, you know, occupational health and safety. I'm not quite sure what that means, but for the staff and for the councillors that work full time, you've got to remember that these meetings are off the back of a full day's work. Um, and as I said, the councillors are the lowliest paid people that are doing it off the back of a full day's work that attend these dinners. Um, and they deserve to get something hot and, um, and nourishing, not expensive. The uh, point about the uh, receptions, they have got flashier. I personally enjoy them, but um, if they're, um, and I don't really want a biscuit and a cup of tea, um, but I'm sure that we can cover the bit of cloth there. But as I said, we are the cheapest things. Don't, don't go for the fat, not for the lean. Thank you, Councillor Moran. I have Councillor Martin, followed by Councillor Hyde. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, a question first. Does the administration take uh, paragraph three to include at the separate point civic receptions? I'll ask the Deputy Lord Mayor. Well, I think that's his intention. I'm just asking if the administration sees that also. No, I was very clear in my um, speech. We already know what the expense on civic reception is in the budget. <laughs> I don't know what the other expenses are for dinner. So we've already consulted our community on the civic receptions in the, in the current budget. So I'm not sure how we're going to revisit it. Okay, well, look, um, no, well, it's an attempt again to keep the information secret. Um, it's well, uh, what information? Total budget? Uh, how much is a civic reception? Well, the administration, how much is a civic reception, please? What range of cost? Three, Lord Mayor. It's part of the civic budget. I don't have it in my hands at the moment, but we do have it in part of the budget, and that is a public document. Okay. Well, look, this is this is a problem. Um, I, I I am sensitive to what everybody else in the chamber is saying, and so I will support this. But it, it is obfuscation again. It's sort of you know, let's not be really open about how much a civic reception costs, and uh, let's keep that to ourselves. But at the same time, let's have a look at everything else which is kind of self-serving. The second part of the motion also is slightly self-serving. It is framed in the context of our needs, efficient ways to take into account the occupational health and safety of council members and staff and their meal times. I mean, for God's sakes, we are a local government. We are here for our stakeholders, and that includes people who want answers from us. So why would we frame a review about committees and the council structure um, having an eye to our meal times and breaks? Why wouldn't we be more concerned about meeting the needs of our important stakeholders, which include the state government, which include uh, developers, which include people who come to us with all kinds of proposals? Uh, isn't that the job of council? Or is it that we are, as uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor suggests, focused on taking into account the occupational health and safety of council members and staff that may include meeting times, breaks and dinners, remote meeting provisions. It, it is misguided. Um, but I read the, room of the, mood, uh, the mood of the room, rather, um, and uh, uh, I will support it. Um, deeply flawed though it is. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Hyde. 
Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Just quickly, I'm very glad, glad that that point of clarification was made to carve out um, uh, civic receptions of this. Of course, we know how much they cost um, and I don't think they need uh, any other scrutiny. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that um, uh, the intent of the original motion uh, I was very concerned with because um, what, what sort of uh, a capital city council would we be um, if we didn't host significant figures that come to visit our fair city? Um, it, it concerns me I that- I didn't say that, Lord Mayor. That is not what we're saying. That it concerns me that we may have been going down the path of, of unprecedented scrutiny, austerity, um, and, and almost a sort of Calvinistic approach where we offer a tea and a biscuit. I mean, gosh, what are we saying to potential uh, big thinkers, thinkers in residence, composers in residence? What are we saying to potential investors in the city when we welcome this, welcome them into this august building um, and, and we have nothing to offer them but crumbs? My gosh, hospitality, <laughs> hospitality, hospitality is the hallmark of a civilized society. That's a society I think we have in the city of Adelaide and I would hate for us to downgrade uh, uh, from the current standard, which I think is is also within community expectations, but of a standard um, that makes those uh, visitors to our city uh, feel welcome. Thank you, Councillor Canal. I mean, the purpose uh, from my uh, supporting this motion is that if we're going to look at costs, we're going to look at things, then at least let's have some purpose to it, rather than just digging up and bringing up your figures up and what are you going to do with it then? And we create then a second uh, a second opportunity to say, do what? So here is at least one, an opportunity to, let's look at what goes on, let's look at what we spend, let's be, let's hold it accountable. And I know that the, the dinners aren't necessarily uh, opulent or anything like that, but you know they are certainly functional, but when are they most efficient? And when are they most in regards to, if we talk about staying up late and when, when you're uh, debating until 10 o'clock at night, discussing when your dinner is coming on. Um, you know, it, it's, uh, it, you may be able to have a more efficient time and, and things do change. So let's look at that, but let's look at it with a purpose. And the purpose is to, uh, to see what are options we can do. How can we improve things? Is there some other better way? In regards to the, the leaving out of the, the civic receptions, yes, I think most of this room in canvassed, but we are talking about, and I've, and I've been, I've been fortunate to go to a few as a councillor and otherwise, that these are times that we, from the local community, those people that don't get recognised, those people that do uh, a lot of good social good, um, they, they have the opportunity to be welcomed. And that's something that we can do that a state government can't do. Because we are a city, we are a place where the state government is, is obviously uh, the whole state. And uh, we're able to give them uh, a special recognition, something that which at a moment in time where they, and I uh, recall the one uh, with the ice, the ice pack, whatever it was called, um, where uh, the, through the ice hockey and things like that, they brought the Aboriginal communities together, uh, children and who were uh, certainly disadvantaged, and they came up and that was one of the most uh, moving uh, events that I was at, simply because these these young people had an opportunity, and they were they were actually being brought out and recognised. And I thought, this is this is why we do these things: is to say, wow, this is fantastic, and we do it in a manner that uplifts them. I mean, we can certainly hold it outside. We can certainly put a few picnic tables out. That's all cool, except we are not going to uh, enable. Uh, you know, and really celebrate what people are doing who don't ask for anything special. And it's our job to actually call them out. Otherwise, why would we have all these awards and IOMs and whatever else? Uh, it is because people do things uh, for the community. And it is important that someone can do that. We as a council can do that, whereas other, other forms of government cannot do that. And I think uh, uh, if we're going to ask the council, uh, the administration, do have a look at this, then bring back something that we can work with, something that we can say, okay, uh, this is the ways we can do it more functionally. For my staff who stay here as late as we do, what is it that we require to give them? And we've already had the comments of getting fat because we're eating so late. Um, I think we can have a bit of a look at that and see what else we can do. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. I will just for the record also say I think there has been oysters served once uh, since I became Lord Mayor and that was because they were in season at that particular moment in time. Um, I will go back, to, if there's no other speakers, I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. 
Look, I'll be brief, Lord Mayor. Um, tonight's meeting is a perfect example to why this is needed and why the amendment is needed. Um, we are sitting here debating. There are staff sitting in the Queen Adelaide room that are waiting for us to finish. There are meals that are being prepared. We don't know what time we'll finish. We have staff sitting in this very room. I know there are staff looking at my right that are waiting to answer on Councillor Hyde's motion at 11.7, uh, 11.5, um, to do with social media, and that's a motion we've dealt with before. I mean, these are some of the things that we potentially can be more effective and more efficient in. Uh, we could potentially look at the motions where staff need to respond to, where we deal with them in the beginning so staff can go home. There are ways we can do this better, and that's what we're suggesting through this process. So I'd ask members to support this. Um, I'm happy with what Councillor Sims have brought in in the way of a variation. Of course, I love seeing your face every week. Why would I want to change that, Councillor Sims? Um, so, you know, at the end, um, I'm certain us as elected members can lead by example, can make the right relevant changes to affect what we need to affect. And being that it's a new council, we've been in the role for a good 12 months, by October, almost 11 months. So it's, it's a good time to revisit it and get some um, directive from the new councillors of what they think is the best way to manage meetings and move forward. It shouldn't be just our way, and it shouldn't be set in concrete. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, members, if we go to the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. That now becomes a substantive. I'll go back to Councillor Martin. Well, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I just want to express my disappointment again that uh, uh, the opportunity to understand the costs to the ratepayers of those civic receptions um, uh, that did serve those delicious oysters. I do remember those. They were they were really quite good. But the pork belly is good too. Um, uh, I, I do think it's a missed opportunity, um, and it, it did provide us with an opportunity to consider whether that was an appropriate way to proceed. Now that is hived off, and they will continue, and the champagne will continue to flow. Um, in respect of uh, the matter that uh, that has been uh, reintroduced um, in relation to the meeting schedule, uh, look, I, I support that. Uh, I just wish that it was a bit broader. If it hadn't been un, uh, done on the fly, as these things often are, then uh, we might have had a much more considered approach that would have included consultation with stakeholders. Uh, we would have gone out and asked government, is it okay with you if we meet once, twice, three times a month, or is it okay if we meet every second Christmas? But we're not doing that. We are simply having an investigation based on our meal times and uh, the occupational health and safety consequences for our, uh, our diets. Um, so uh, I'm disappointed about that, but I, I will support the motion and I look forward to the administration bringing back um, this uh, report into some of the issues I've raised. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, that takes us to 11.3, Councillor Martin, accommodation option. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I think I have a seconder. Um, I can save a lot of time if um, the Deputy Lord Mayor wants to amend it. I'm happy for him to propose it now. No, Thank you, Councillor Martin. Would you? Uh, uh, I have Councillor Sims as a second. You can speak to the motion. Okay. No, I was just trying to save the meeting some time. Um, now, look, I, I put this uh, on the notice uh, paper as a, a motion because um, I just think it's something we ought to consider as part of the property review. Um, there, there is nothing in this uh, beyond what is said. Uh, we met uh, in confidence last month, uh, as everyone would understand, for a preliminary discussion about a review of our property assets. That motion was placed uh, on the public record by uh, uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, what we've not discussed in, in that review, and I think uh, it ought to be on the agenda, at least for discussion, as this proposes, is what happens about our very own Colonel Light Centre in Peary Street, which, by the way, uh, everyone should know, turned 50 this year, 50 years old, half a century. Um, it currently houses our public interface uh, and the majority of our administrative staff. And the building, as everyone knows, is requiring more and more maintenance. There was some work done just uh, last week or the week before to the front. Um, and of course, there are, uh, by all accounts, varying standards throughout the building. Uh, some parts, some floors, 
have been brought up to a standard, uh, other parts have not. And I would guess it would be an expectation that at some time in the future, there will have to be money spent updating the building uh, to bring it up to standard. Um, then there's uh, energy efficiency. A building that was uh, constructed in the 70s is not going to have the kind of efficient energy systems that buildings that have been designed and built in the last decade have. Uh, and that means that there is another cost to this city. And we mustn't forget the work environment. That's important. It is what we've been uh, talking about tonight in terms of OH&S, although I stress there's no OH&S issue associated with that building. But there is an issue about providing uh, an environment for staff that makes them want to be there, that makes people want to work for this organisation. And it's always a factor in any uh, individual's employment that they seek a position in a quality workplace. And finally, uh, there is the matter of the customer service centre. I think that probably needs discussion. Uh, we have a uh, customer service centre which is not where the people are. It is in Peary Street, and a lovely street that it is. Uh, the majority of the people in this city are located in other places, around Rundle Mall, North Terrace, Victoria uh, Square, wherever, but not Peary Street. So um, the question that needs to be asked is, is it possible that the administrative uh, centre and the customer interface uh, can be separated? And where would it go? I mean, would it be a reasonable thing to place it somewhere else? And maybe in cohabitation with some other uh, uh, council asset? Can I just have 15 seconds, Lord Mayor? Thank you. Um, so uh, there are many possible scenarios. I don't seek to influence it by putting any particular scenario forward. All I'm doing is saying, look, here is a, a opportunity where we are doing a strategic review of property to say, let's put this on the agenda because there's not going to be another strategic property review for quite some time. Future councils will say, well, you know, that's just been done. So here is a chance for us to make that assessment about uh, all of the possible alternatives while we're doing that review. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Sims has the second did you wish to reserve your right, Councillor Hyde? Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. I, I rise in opposition to this motion. Uh, I, I can't support it in the slightest. In fact, the, the parts of, um, looking at the administration comments, the parts that concern me the most are uh, the words capital renewal expenditure. Capital renewal expenditure. Um, so what essentially we're looking at is uh, uh, talking about renewing the offices uh, that the administration work in. At a time, at a time, of course, when we just had a discussion about austerity, when we just had a discussion about austerity and how much we spend on hospitality, entertaining guests that come to the city, we're immediately after that talking about um, uh, renewing offices for our staff, which of course are very hard working, um, and we've all been in those offices, and we know they're actually up to a higher standard, and Councillor Martin acknowledged that. Um, in his remarks, of course, there is a, a, a modest gym there to support health and well-being of our workforce. Um, uh, there's a common room um, and, and many other communal facilities in the building. So it beggars belief that we're actually discussing um, uh, potentially uh, rebuilding, redesigning and spending ratepayers' funds on gold plating offices for our staff, when in actual fact, what we should be spending money on um, uh, is, is roads, rates and rubbish. Those are our core business. Our core business is not, is not creating, uh, as we call it, accommodation facilities even. And I don't even know why that word's been used, but accommodation facilities um, for our staff. So Lord Mayor, um, I can't support this motion. Um, I think it would be a flagrant misuse uh, of ratepayer monies um, um, to reinvest uh, or to invest in such a thing because I don't think there would be much return on the investment. The facilities that our staff have um, uh, are to a high standard and I think it facilitates them doing the excellent job that they do um, in supporting a lot of the motions that actually make it through this chamber. So um, uh, Lord Mayor and, and to the rest of the chamber, I would say uh, we do, should not support this motion. I think at a time when we've seen other councils 
Um, and I think Prospect has just redone a building. Salisbury's just redone their administration building. And of course, the council that um, we all hold in such high esteem, Onka Paringa, are about to spend tens of millions of dollars rebuilding their, their administration building. I would say talk to those ratepayers and see what they think of that. Um, and that will, without even having spoken to our ratepayers, give you the answer that you need to decide on how you vote on this motion. Thank you, Councillor. Hi, Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I'm a little perplexed by um, Councillor Hyde's opposition to this um, because, you know, through you, uh, Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde is proposing himself a series of investigations tonight into scooters going to North Adelaide, um, the costs associated with uh, maintenance of the parklands and um, also uh, the um, promotion of uh, council through social media. I'm happy to support investigating potentially good ideas. I don't know whether this is a good idea. That's why I'd like the investigation to take place um, for our administration to look at this um, and uh, give us some advice on whether it's, it's worthwhile looking at. I think it's always appropriate to uh, look at um, whether we're ensuring that we offer the best uh, facilities to our staff to, to work in. And as Councillor Martin has suggested, this is a timely um, period to do it because of other changes that are happening in the city. So my advice would be, uh, you know, to, uh, to you, Councillor Hyde, through you, Lord Mayor, is, um, you know, consider an investigation, have an open mind, um, and you may not think it's worthwhile, but let's hear from our administration. Um, about whether they think this is worth uh, investigating and um, then make up your um, up your mind. And um, I encourage other councillors to do the same. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Members, if not, I'll go back to the mover. Councillor Martin to sum up. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I emphasise again, this is just putting something on the radar for discussion. Um, uh, no one's suggesting uh, that immediately we're going to reaccommodate our staff. No one is suggesting we're spending any money. It is simply asking the question. And uh, the question is, are these suitable premises? Is there a better way of doing it? Is it possible to find some solution to our problems of accommodating the administration that maybe costs nothing um, uh, and meets the standards of a Dickensian land landlord, as uh, <laughs> Councillor Hyde seems to prefer? Um, it, it could be possible to come up with something um, at very little cost in no cost to the ratepayers. But look, it is a forward-thinking position. It is a request for this to go into a piece of work which is already underway. There is no additional cost. It is simply putting the matter on the radar. And I do ask members to support that, and it's pretty straightforward. Members, to the vote, those in favour, those against, Division. that is lost. Sorry, members, I have to ask you to do that again. Those in favour? Those against? Division. Councillors, the division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing till all names have been called. Right. Councillor Martin, Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims and Councillor Donovan. Thank you, members. That takes us to 11. For Councillor Kerr. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move as printed and seek a seconder. I have a seconder in Councillor Hyde. Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Look, um, the uh, look. This this motion. Uh, this motion was born uh, of speaking not from uh, not to uh, not to music organisations uh, or. Nor was it from speaking to uh, to bureaucrats, but from speaking, Lord Mayor, to musicians. Uh, this motion uh, is born from speaking to musicians, and what it seeks to do, Lord Mayor, uh, is to uh, specifically target um, to specifically target uh, a gap in the market. Now, um, I would humbly say to the chamber that uh, I think I've demonstrated a great uh, caution with respect to committing uh, ratepayers' money. Um, I think that, uh, uh, and, and having said that, I do think, I do think that where you have, uh, to me, two conditions, one is that you have a market failure, uh, and the other is that it's reasonable. I think, I think it is uh, appropriate for government at all levels to look to step in. 
And what musicians have identified in this particular regard is a very serious gap in the market uh, because um, what you have with, with live music is uh, you, uh, for the benefit of members, we're talking about what's called backline equipment. So what is present in live music venues uh, is what is called, it is PA, which is vocal amplification and a mixing disc. And that generally speaking is all you get if you are a, a musician and you turn up to perform live at a venue. Um, what you do have to provide yourself right now is a drum kit, is the very large amplification units uh, required for guitar and, and keyboard as well as your in own instruments. And what this seeks to do, Lord Mayor, what this seeks to do uh, is to identify that particular, that sort of hole, because you have musicians uh, who currently, uh, in order to load their, their equipment uh, at live, in order to play live, they've got to break the law. That, that is the words that I've received uh, from musicians directly. Now, we can tinker about with loading zones and all of that, but it doesn't change the fact that it is extremely onerous for uh, young musicians to turn up to the, the, the handful of live venues in town, lug an enormously heavy piece of PA, uh, piece of uh, uh, amplification uh, gear up uh, upstairs and whatnot, um, and have to rely on the band member who has a car. That's another element that musicians have identified. You have to rely on, on the band members who have a car. What this would allow, uh, if it went through, uh, would be an alleviating of that situation, which would allow musicians to turn up to a venue on public transport to bring their instrument on public transport and not rely on the band member uh, who has a, a, a vehicle in order to lug this heavy gear. Um, and what I would like to impress upon members above all is the, is the absolutely minimal cost uh, that, this, that this proposal involves. And we are uh, uh, relatively, relatively, and I say uh, that with all respect because this is ratepayers' money, but relatively speaking, we're talking about a very minimal cost, Lord Mayor. Um, the, we, we, we have less than two handfuls of uh, recurrent live music venues uh, in the CBD. Uh, and in order to speak to them, and this proposal just says, we have a problem here, we've identified a problem, let's speak to the venues, let's bring them to the table and let's say, what are the incentives we can provide uh, to fix this gap in the market, Lord Mayor? And uh, with uh, 15, thank you, um, Look, uh, with, with that in mind, uh, I would just reinforce that we're talking about a minimal spend. If uh, members see, fit, see this through, I give my undertaking that I will work very closely with administration to make sure this is direct, this is targeted, this is efficient, this does not cost a great deal of ratepayers' money. I leave members of the Chamber with that undertaking. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Councillor Hyde. Just briefly, Lord Mayor, it's always a pleasure to rise in support of the arts um, uh, and live music venues in the city of Adelaide. Um, I'm, of course, a great consumer of the arts and culture, um, especially in my retirement. But um, uh, I would just like to say, I would just, I would just like to say, um, uh, and of course, pay pay tribute to the work that is already going on. Um, uh, uh, in, in the Colonel Light Centre um, uh, with regards to live music, the live music action strategy, and of course the outcomes that came out of the 90 day um, action plan and what have you, and all those, all those bits and pieces. There's an enormous amount of uh, work that's already been done um, uh, and is still ongoing. Um, and this is perhaps another tool in the kit, um, and I look forward to receiving this report from administration. But um, uh, in receiving this report from administration, I was looking to get um, a, a couple of undertakings, um, and, and hopefully the uh, three Lord Mayor, the CEO, can respond to them. And that is the first one that, um, and Councillor Kira touched on it, that we could actually uh, get a little bit of a look at the accessibility options around live music venues. Um, because uh, while it would be excellent uh, for them to have these in place, there are inevitably some bands that will want to bring in their own equipment and that will still remain to be a sticking point um, uh, for a lot of them. Um, uh, and the other, the other uh, undertaking I'd like to get from administration is that included in this report um, is, is essentially uh, an overview of the work that we already do because I've tried to piece it together here and there in a piecemeal sort of way, um, but even I'm struggling to get clarity on the uh, uh, on the on the immense work that's already done by 
by the City of Adelaide in this. In this. So am I able to get those undertakings? CEO? Clear. Can you respond? Uh, through the Lord Mayor, in relation to accessibility, uh, when we became a UNESCO City of Music, um, one of the first pieces of work we did was uh, respond to feedback we had from um, many venues here in the city and North Adelaide around accessibility. Um, we offered um, each venue uh, the opportunity to convert um, loading zones into um, wider bays um, and specifically um, put a sign up to say this is for musicians and there are passes and stickers available to do that. Um, I think there was around 14 venues in total that took up that opportunity, but I'm sure we can, um, that was a couple of years ago, so there's further work we can do. Um, I'm happy to take a, um, an undertaking to um, a summary of all the other work that we're doing to support live music in the city in North Adelaide. Thank you. Through Lord Mayor, I just think that would assist in the consideration of this report when it comes back to Council. Um, uh, but broadly, very supportive of the principles um, and supporting uh, our artists in the city of Adelaide. Okay, thank you, Councillor Hyde. I have Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I also um, support this. Uh, it will be a costly um, undertaking, um, but I think it's worthwhile the um, investment because um, I think we should be doing um, what we can to uh, support local musicians and, and local um, artists. So I think this is um, definitely um, worthwhile, um, worthwhile investment of time and, and worthwhile investment of, of council funds. So absolutely support it. I would um, also make the point that you know earlier tonight we um, dealt a, a bit of a blow to um, the pokies industry in Adelaide, and that's good for live music because we know from um, the uh, experience interstate that pokies actually do damage a lot of music trade. So um, these measures, I think, are a good way of, um, of supporting that industry in our city. Um, so yeah, I'm very supportive of, um, of what Councillor Kira is, is doing. Don't look so perplexed, Councillor Kira. I'm supporting you. Enjoy it. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Okay. Members, if not, I go back to Councillor Kira to sum up. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I'll keep brief. Um, I'm just perplexed because the Golden Waffle uh, is, in fact, a live music venue. Uh, it is one of the newest live music venues in the city. Um, so I just I couldn't help but notice the irony um, there. But look, um, uh, the I don't think it will be a costly proposal. I don't think this will be a relative costly proposal. Uh, music equipment is actually very cheap, thanks to the fact that lots of parents buy lots of teenage kids, lots of gear, and then it then floods the market. So it is actually quite efficient. I don't think the uh, I don't think the incentives we need to offer will amount to a substantial uh, uh, impost relative to the outcome that we will achieve. It's a uh, it's a long way to the top, as they say. Uh, if you want to go to politics, and also if you want to rock and roll, and uh, and live music. If you look at the live music scene, you, you speak to you know uh, any cursory appraisal will 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 see uh, that live music is very much a labour of love, and if we can help alleviate some of the labour, we will bring more love. So, members, <laughs> to the vote. Those in favour. Those against. That is carried. Councillor Martin, don't love rock and roll. We have now we go on to uh, 11.5, Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move this motion in the terms that it appears on the agenda and seek a seconder. Councillor Moran. Very popular. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think this motion is fairly self-explanatory. Um, uh, this is about increasing, uh, hopefully, the ratings that we get uh, live streaming um, uh, on the internet of our council meetings. Um, uh, there are a few reasons uh, for this. Um, often there's been some conjecture in the media about the conduct of council meetings, which I think are by and large um, very well behaved. Um, of course, sunlight is the best disinfectant. Um, so let's 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 let our our ratepayers and our viewers um, uh, themselves make the determination on how we conduct ourselves in this meeting, um, which of course is to a high standard, quite uh, quite broadly, and chaired to a very high standard as well. But um, the other thing I would say, uh, Lord Mayor, is that it, it's incumbent upon us uh, uh, to to connect with our ratepayers in whatever way possible. 
Um, uh, and of course, I'm, uh, there's no surprise to my colleagues here, I loathe social media, I no longer have any social media. In fact, I think it may be the downfall of our species. But, uh, but nevertheless, um, uh, if you want the honey, you've got to follow the bees. Um, and for better or worse, our ratepayers exist um, uh, in this awful digital world. And so we must make our democracy accessible to them in that form. Um, uh, and, and, in, and in highlighting that, I would just say, again, reading the administration comment um, and noting there were some comments made in a, in a previous debate uh, about this coming in before, I note that my motion actually reads, um, uh, including developing the ability to stream live on Facebook and other social media platforms. The administration comment says, one, uh, uh, meetings of council committee currently stream live with the link made available on the City of Adelaide website. Um, uh, two, in addition, the link to live streaming council meetings is available on the City of Adelaide Facebook page and the City of Adelaide Twitter websites. That is all that is mentioned in the administration comment um, uh, when it comes to live streaming onto Facebook. And, and so through, Lord, through you, Lord Mayor, I'd ask a question to the CEO. Um, uh, are you interpreting my motion to mean that that is sufficient to constitute live streaming on these social media platforms? CEO? Through Lord Mayor, yes, that's how we would interpret uh, I would like to clarify that interpretation is absolutely wrong. Um, uh, and so in clarifying that that interpretation is absolutely wrong, um, uh, I would like to highlight that, of course, I could pick up um, well, not my phone, but I could pick up a phone right now and start streaming these no. meetings live on Facebook. Sorry, sorry, Councillor Hyde, I'll just ask the CEO to clarify. So just again, so the, the intent is to utilise Facebook to stream the council meetings? Is that, yes. That is, that is correct, yes. Yeah. So, so, but, but the, the viewing of the video, instead of just uh, putting on the Facebook page, for example, a link to our website, which then has the video, which is a little bit clunky, uh, it's administration, it's through Lord Mayor, it's the administration's interpretation that instead we would actually be live streaming the video content directly onto the Facebook platform for users to consume in that format yeah, and on Councillor that Councillor that is my understanding of the motion as well. That's so we're clear? Yep, we're clear. Yep, we're clear. All right, all rosy. Okay, I commend the motion to the Chamber. So I have Councillor Moran, then Councillor Abraham today, and then Councillor Kerr. Moran? Oh, no, I think it's quite straightforward. I don't need to say anything. Councillor Abraham today? Um, I uh, rise in support of this uh, this motion. Uh, I just see one uh, problem with this. It is going to create some competition with uh, popular shows like The Bachelor, The Bachelorette, <laughs> etc., etc. So, uh, other than that, uh, I uh, ask the members to support this. Councillor Kieran. Yeah, I'm in support. Um, I'm just wondering whether we could have facilities for uh, instant replays, the live commentary, and maybe some columns of flame for. No, um, look, I, not, not, not to demean uh, the, the motion. It is, it is important. This is important. If you watch, uh, if you watch uh, State Parliament, uh, I think last time I watched um, State Parliament Question Time, there was one fixed camera and you couldn't even see the person speaking. It was just sort of stuck in one direction. We do have the same situation here. Um, I think it really is a good idea for us to do our absolute best uh, to allow people to directly see uh, what it is that we're saying, um, because otherwise, uh, well, we can't, you know, really blame the fact that what we what we're saying is is mediated by external parties. So it's a good motion. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I also support it. I think it's about modernising the way um, in which we conduct our meetings and being more accessible to the community. I do agree with um, Councillor Abraham Sadu. We do need a gay bachelor in Adelaide. Um, it would be well worth um, looking at. Um, might I uh, also just request to the administration when they're uh, looking at this that they consider a very soft lens, maybe a stocking over the lens, um, uh, particularly after, um, after a busy weekend. Um, but thank you, Lord Mayor. I look forward to the report. Thank you. Councillors, Deputy Lord Mayor. I wanted to make a, a quick remark. Um, it would be really important if we can also get as part of the report some statistics on the level of engagement we've received with the current live feed that we've got. I know we've got a significant uplift in uh, regular attendant, attendance of council meetings. Um, and also, if we can circulate a report, I know we did explore this at the last council, and I think there were some legislative issues with regards to comments, etc. Um, so, yeah, it would be really good to see what why we couldn't do it because I think technology wise it was easy but there was issues around some of the legislation framework which would be great and look Councillor Hyde I know you're not on social media but 
you're a very good uh, Tinder follower, so it'll be really good to, uh, it'll, be, it'll be really good, you can swipe, swipe left or right Definitely. on, uh, on some you. of the council <laughs> meetings, it'll make your life easy for you. <laughs> Members, <laughs> Councillor Hyde, would you like, oh sorry, <laughs> Councillor Martin. <laughs> How does the Deputy Lord Mayor know that Councillor Hyde? Yes, thank you. Oh, Councillor Hyde, would you like to sum up? I'll just sum up by saying, looking around the room, of course, uh, I think we could give the Bachelor uh, a good run for the ratings, so I commend the motion. Members, those in favour? Those against? That's carried. That takes us to 11.6. Councillor Hyde. I'm back again. Um, uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I think this motion is um, uh, fairly self-explanatory. Of course, in moving it, um, I'd like to highlight for a second. For a second, Councillor Moran. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, I'd like to highlight that, of course, I've uh, consulted all the North Ward um, councillors and North Ward based councillors um, uh, and sought their views on this extension. They've been broadly supportive, and I thank, of course, Councillor Moran. Um, uh, for her seconding this motion. Um, uh, this is a, a very self-explanatory matter, of course. Uh, the, the East Gritter trial has been uh, broadly successful, of course, even in, in the cold winter months, we've seen still seen people uh, rolling around uh, on this innovative um, uh, and, and highly sought after mobility option uh, in the city of Adelaide. Um, uh, and, and with that, I would say that it's time to look at uh, extending it to North Adelaide. Of course, there are businesses there in North Adelaide that uh, would like to have that accessibility option available to their customers. Um, and naturally, of course, there are residents as well that would like to use um, e-scooters to get to and from home. Um, if we're talking about that first and last travel of mile, of course, when we're in the city of Adelaide, there is only uh, the one first and last travel of mile. So e-scooters are an excellent option uh, for our residents as well. So I commend the motion to you. Thank you, Councillor Moran. I reserve my right. Members? Councillor Martin. Uh, just a minor point. Um, I support the motion, uh, along with uh, Councillor Moran as North Adelaide councillors. Um, uh, E-scooters would be popular with uh, a suburb that is rapidly changing in its demographic. The majority of people are under 40. But uh, I would ask, however, that the administration ascertain first before we ask the government uh, if these scooters can actually get up Montefiore Hill and King William. They are low powered, battery operated scooters. Um, it would be a shame after tantalising the residents of North Adelaide with the possibility of scooters to discover that most of them are left halfway up the hill. Councillor Martin, I asked the same thing this afternoon and our director over here, Clinton Demonish, has actually volunteered to uh, uh, try, trial the scooter up the hill if we can actually take off the geofencing just to make sure that it's all... Can I ask that Councillor Hyde be included? The same scooter? Same scooter. No, sorry, only one scooter per person. Councillor Hyde, would you like to sum up? Uh, yes, and of course, um, uh, ever the competent pu public policy maker, um, I've already consulted both the e-scooter operators that operate um, uh, within the City of Adelaide, and they both assure me that they are able to make it up the hill. Um, of course, there will be a little bit of a drain on power, but there will be enough uh, power to get to there, uh, and then of course back down the hill as well. Uh, but naturally, of course, this is a trial, um, uh, and we will all be intrigued to see the results of said trial. Um, of course, we hope it all goes well, but we'll see what happens, and uh, we'll adjust our policy settings uh, as and when the trial concludes. Thank you, members. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. That takes us to 11.7, .7. Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move this motion in the terms it appears on the agenda and seek a seconder. I have Councillor Appleham today. Thank you. Um, uh, again, another very self-explanatory motion. Um, of course, I was um, very surprised, uh, this is my first year, um, on the council and parklands is obviously a very big issue uh, for uh, all of our ratepayers, uh, both uh, both the residents and the businesses. Um, and uh, of course, I've been recently appointed to Appler as well. Um, and other councillors, I think, uh, and members share this view with me that um, there's been some uh, some figures thrown around about what we actually spend on the parklands. Of course, I I believe the parklands, uh, in keeping with uh, Colonel William Light's vision. Um, is probably our most important asset that we have within our local government area boundaries. Um, yet we don't really have clarity on how much we spend on uh, maintaining it um, uh, and how much we get uh, in, uh, we could call it income, but let's 
just for argument's sake, call it cost recovery, because I think that's what it's about. Because we're not actually interested necessarily in making an income on the parklands. It's not what it's about. Um, uh, but we've really never seen a balance sheet, or at least I haven't. Now, I understand there are many reasons for this, um, and it is a complicated body of work for the administration uh, to pull together. Um, nevertheless, I think it's important for this chamber uh, to place on the record that we want to see this report come into council. Um, not necessarily in any great hurry. I'd rather it be done thoroughly than rushed. Um, uh, but we need to understand exactly all the components that go into managing the parklands, and they're varied and many. Um, uh, and then uh, we also need to understand a little bit more about that, uh, particularly when we're framing it in the idea of uh, parkland governance, which is always a hot topic in this chamber, and I'm sure will continue to bubble along as the term goes on. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Abraham today. Members? Councillor Martin. Um, yeah, look, thank you. And look, I, I agree with Councillor Hyde. We do value the parklands, and I don't think we should give them to the Adelaide Football Club. But that's not why I rose to speak. I rose to say that I, I wonder if the administration would be prepared as part of the exercise um, to include a costing of the Riverbank precinct. As Councillor Hyde undoubtedly knows, the previous state government hived off more than 300 hectares and put it under the control of the Riverbank Authority. Um, the area runs from Hackney Road to Port Road and covers the entire middle part of the parklands. Um, that area is now controlled by REPAC, that's R-E-P-A-C, um, Deputy Lord Mayor is doing his newsletter, I want to make sure he gets it right. Um, REPAC, which is the Riverbank uh, Entertainment um, Precinct Advisory uh, uh, Committee, which is made up of representatives of the casino, the Intercontinental. Are you speaking to the motion? Yes, I am. Yep, I am. Um, I'm, I'm explaining why REPAC is important to the parklands. Um, so, anyway. Um, these people all have a say in what happens in terms of the future of the Riverbank precinct. Um, as we do, we're actually one voice on Riverbank, one voice only, not a controlling voice. And so the argument arises among ratepayers, why should we be paying for the maintenance of 320 hectares of parklands when it's controlled by the casino, the Riverbank um, uh, parties like the Oval and so forth. And therefore, it would be useful to understand if, if uh, the councillor doesn't object, uh, if it's possible at all, what that cost is of maintaining that where we have no control. I would think that actually it's fairly clear that you're talking about all of the parklands, Councillor Hyde. Uh, I take a very traditional view of the parklands. So everything that's uh, outside of the, the city square mile and and surround. So yes, I would hope repack is in there, but if administration needs, we can. I can move a variation and have it in there. Members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Uh, I'd just like to thank Councillor Martins for his very pertinent observations, and uh, yes, I endorse them fully. Summed up. Members, those in favour? Those against? That's carried. And we have. Uh, 18, oh, sorry, 11.8, Councillor Knoll. Now present uh, the, uh, the Chamber of the Motion and I seek a second. Councillor Abraham today, thank you. Okay. Um, this is a, quite a simple motion and it, it really, it, it's come out of uh, a, a, the West End uh, a reference group, group uh, a presentation that was done by he uh, Helen Connolly. And she was speaking about youth and youth in the city and she'd done a, a, a large, uh, interaction with them and talk with uh, over a thousand uh, young people to get their ideas and opinions and this is to help frame uh, in her role as the commission for children and young people and out of that uh, came that uh, they when they're in town and, uh, and, and when they're around they needed places to go and we're talking about uh, the, those that are under 24 those that are still school age and, and uh, um, you know, are able to be out, I suppose, in their, in their own. And when you look at that, uh, in the city at the moment, there are about uh, 2,800 that are under 20 um, and 8,100 students. And they say by 2036, 34% uh, will be under 24. So, um, and we're, we're about to embark on, our, our, on the uh, strategic plan for the next four years. And I thought it, it is important that we try to incorporate uh, this uh, age group. 
And because we're dealing with a lot, we've got look, fantastic playgrounds and things like that to encourage families to come into town and uh, with, the, with the Quinn and Keenan uh, playground as well. So there's a lot of things we're doing on that level. I won't talk about the, the, the age group that uh, is able to go into town on their own and, uh, and be in the city. And one of the things that they basically asked for was a place to hang out. And that is that, you know, whether they want to meet their friends, etc., that there is a space that they go, uh, they can go to that is safe, um, that is accessible, um, that has just a, a bit of an infrastructure around it, as in just uh, if they want to eat, things like that. But it's an, it, was an, it allows Adelaide City to enable them to use the city as their, as their preferred place to go. And if we're looking at a, at a city that's trying to be from, from cradle to grave uh, and something that is a healthy city, which uh, looks after all age groups, um, I think it's important that we start to, to get uh, them into the habit of actually uh, coming into the city and, and remaining in the city uh, for their uh, leisure time. Uh, to be able to use all the all the activities and things that we, are, we offer, there's so many places they can go to, but again, we don't have a place to which to speak to them. So to have a space that is, has enough amenities that uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's comfortable for them to go to and, and places that they can, uh, in their individual groups, uh, you know, be able to uh, hang out together and, uh, you know, uh, and, and spend their time. But also making the city uh, their, their main place of where they want to stay. And uh, their, that familiarity also means that they will tend to use it as a preference. In other words, for uh, the business community, etc., it is an ability for us uh, to have the, uh, that, uh, you know, the next generation come through town and be part of the city and feel that it is their place. And that encourages people to uh, consolidate the footprint. It brings the city closer because that's part of the problem when they turn at the at, uh, parklands to make a decision to go either in or stay out. Um, that uh, they do, uh, uh, you know, choose to come into town, which means that we will, as a city, be able to be able to pro uh, provide much better services and engage with them and give them a safe environment, which is not usually the case when they go a bit further out. Thank you, Councillor Pennell. Councillor Abraham Zanou. Just very briefly, I'd like to uh, commend Councillor Connell for uh, bringing this motion to the Chamber. Uh, it shows that he is uh, uh, thinking ahead. Uh, um, I guess this is a bit of a long-term strategy to, in order to uh, capture the uh, Generation Z or otherwise it's not, not Centennials or the iGen. Uh, in order to uh, capture them, engage with them, and encourage them to live in the city of Adelaide, work in the city of Adelaide, and play in the city of Adelaide. So uh, I urge members to support this. Thank you. I have Councillor Sims. Okay, Councillor Moran. Yes, look, I will vote for this motion, but it is a very odd motion. Um, uh, of course, we welcome young people to the city. In fact, they're most the most people that attend our city are young people, um, and I really don't understand why young people have to have special, um, sorry, uh, special water fountains and special seating and special phone charging and why they need accessibil accessibility. I want our city to be welcome to all people, um, young people, old people, visiting people, whatever. I think that we have, uh, I will vote for this because it's fine because it will just add another dimension, but I just really don't understand what, what special seating do young people need? What special water fountains do they need? Little, little seating, is it? Um, how young are we talking here, France? Um, but I think this is a, 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 a popularistic view, one that some people in council think that the millennials must come. Millennials are people. People are people. It should be accessible to everybody. And I don't think we should particularly uh, say that we're just attracting cert certain people. It, it's, it's very restrictive. I think it's a bit, a bit rude to the other people, a bit offensive, like we don't want you old people or we don't want you children. We just want these people. Are we basing it on the fact they spend more money or something like that? In that case, it's, you'd, you'd go for the... Uh, it, the wealthy retired. Let's attract them. They're the ones that can afford to eat in restaurants and so forth. So I think this makes no sense, but I will vote for it. I think it's well-meaning and good. Of <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Councillor Moran. Uh, um, members, would anybody else like to speak to the motion? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Knoll to sum up. I think it just shows uh, how misunderstood it is. I think uh, one of the comments that came out of the uh, out of the report that was made is that there is no genuine place uh, for the young people to hang out. 
mean, they use their own little wall and whatever else. Uh, and it's not about being that special. It is just a space, a space that, uh, where they can go to where you have just a minimum infrastructure of some description and it can be amenities, it can be phone charging or whatever it is. But the point is, is that uh, they, we're not catering for these people at all. And if we think about it, we do the little kids, we got the uh, nighttime entertainment, we got the restaurants, we got the employment, we got all the other things. But what we don't have in between all of that is that connection between where they're in the care of their parents and, and uh, their younger age groups and where they start to be able to go out themselves. They need a space just uh, to be able to come along. I mean, they need the public transport and all those sort of things as well. So this is just about keeping them in mind. And when we do do things that we include them, because for the, for the health of our city, we want them to feel that this is their home. And we also have the ability then to look after them uh, just gently, uh, because I mean, it is a, a very uh, open space and with a lot of people and those sort of things and I create safe spaces. And I think we're just gonna remember that. And it is a little bit too, they need to own this space. So they have to be able to be a little bit involved with it and have the services that are around the you think and things like that. Uh, you know, all those things uh, uh, make the, uh, the you know the time here in, in the city a lot better. And I think uh, it's just upon uh, incumbent upon us to encourage them to be part of the city and be more active. Thank you, Councillor Canal. Members, uh, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, members, I'm now looking for uh, motions without notice. Ready? Councillor Moran. Uh, will you indulge us? Uh, Lord Mayor, I'd like to lodge a motion on notice um, that Council investigate the parent parking situation. Sorry, just a moment, Councillor Moran. Just do it. So, Councillor, it can be without notice, but if it's on notice, it has to come to the next meeting. So I'm lodging a motion on notice. I'm not uh, for the next meeting. I'm not. I don't want it debated now because it will need some reports. Okay. I've done it before. Um, that council investigate the parent parking situation surrounding the women's and cho children's hospital and possible solutions including overstay permits by consulting the hospital and assessing the situation. Thank you, Councillor Moran. So we're not debating tonight, we're just lodging that for the next meeting. Thank you. Members, um, are there any further motions without notice? If not, we will go to uh, 13.1, which is exclusion to, no, to the public. Yep. Um, Councillor, there's one item presented with a request for consideration and confidence. The item will require a motion and decision for uh, exclusion to the public to enable consideration. Could I have a mover and a seconder for the motion 14.1.1? Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Seconded by uh, Councillor Abraham today. Members, did anyone want to speak to that? If not, do you wish to sum up, Councillor Knoll? Thank you to the, uh, the floor. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, members of the gallery and staff, thank you for your attendance at the meeting. Um,
I declare the meeting closed.